Hello and welcome to another video by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. Recently, I got the chance to go to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I had great fun and really enjoyed seeing where all the magic happens. I spent most of my time with Gordon Hollingworth, who is both the Director of Software Engineering at the Foundation and also a complete soldering perfectionist. A while back, he promised to answer some of the most important questions and issues that the community have. But Gordon is a busy guy and they were left unanswered. Until now. Here I am interviewing him about the topics that you and the community want to know about. Quite a few people have been interested in how Wayland is developing. Um, can you give us any more information about that? Yeah, so um, one of the reasons we did a Wayland was because um, X, which is what most of the GUI stuff is built on, is a relatively old technology. And when they you know, originally built X, they didn't take into consideration the fact that it's possible to uh, to have hardware acceleration because hardware acceleration just didn't exist in the time, like you know, 1986, um, and therefore it makes it actually quite difficult to accelerate X. Um, so Wayland was actually built with the idea that you could actually accelerate it. I mean, that was the that was the kind of the whole point behind it was to use acceleratable interfaces. Uh, so we've put some money into Wayland uh, to help, uh, you know, to accelerate the work there, but also to get you know, get Wayland working on Raspberry Pi, um, and then to produce, you know, an interface that works really well. We are hoping to move to Wayland in the long term. We'll move to Wayland. We keep bringing out demos of the the functionality on Wayland, and uh, you know, one of the things that has come out of that work is the accelerated um, browser, what we call Web. Uh, which is the accelerated browser, and um, <clears throat> yeah, all of that work's going to come out, and we're going to move hopefully in the long term towards towards running with Wayland. Which piece of software developed or improved by a third party are you most pleased you didn't have to deal with yourself? So I guess probably the most uh, the, the the bit I didn't I'm happy I didn't have to do a lot of work on was camera. Um, the Raspberry Pi camera is developed around basically what is a CCD sensor from a mobile phone. Um, and you know because Raspberry Pi is based around 2835 which is a chip from from a mobile phone then they kind of work together very easily but with some APIs which are very difficult to use and require quite a lot of, of kind of you know of, of knowledge um, so we actually have James Hughes at Broadcom who's done a lot of work in his own time as well as within uh, with Broadcom's time in <clears throat> getting uh, you know things like Raspberry Vid and Raspberry Cam working, and you know, and there's a lot in the community as well. People in the community who've been very interested, who've done things like the Mammal implementation of um, of motion, and um, of course we've had V4L interfaces as well. That was another one that we paid for somebody to actually do the 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 full interface, and um, and that's been good because it just works, which is quite nice. Initially, there are quite a few issues with USB on the Pi. Where are we now? Okay, so um, yeah, originally there was, I would say probably eight to 10 fairly glaringly obvious bugs uh, with USB. Uh, they're actually very difficult, although they do say they're glaringly obvious, it's only when you plug in lots and lots of different devices that you actually come to find these, and this is why we didn't know about them initially. Um, there were the most significant and most obvious ones were keyboards. People noticed that like you'd hit keys and the keys would go missing or they'd get repeated characters. Uh, that was something I fixed um, uh, nearly a year ago now um, with the fix fix. There were a whole bunch of other fixes that uh, that came in mostly you know significantly from the community. Um, one of the guys who did that um, sent us that actually then got employed. Uh, so he now works for us and is in the process of doing a new USB fix which tries to kind of finish off as much as is, is, is really possible within the hardware that we have to actually get it working 100%, um, which we're hoping is going to fix things like um, when you've got lots of keyboard, mice, uh, you serial devices, uh, Bluetooth devices, all that kind of stuff, when you plug lots of them all in then you, we get trouble. But, um, but yeah, so we're hoping for a release of that relatively soon. And that's pretty much our work done on USB. And um, we're hoping that uh, everything should be fine then. Is there a plan for a Raspberry Pi Foundation display that utilizes the DSO port? Yeah, so um, 
So we're looking at doing uh, basically two displays. So the first is kind of like a small seven inch display that's relatively res re low resolution and a sort of 10 inch display, which is better, you know, high resolution for doing kind of media viewing. Um, we're hoping to get those into the marketplace kind of in the first few months of this, this year, but, um, but we'll just have to wait and see when, how the timescales work out. So quite a few people in the community have been interested in Android and whether the Pi would ever be able to support it in the future. I was just wondering what uh, were your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean at the moment we are mainly putting all our money into, into you know, Linux based um, uh, operating systems. Um, Android is a bit too locked down um, and it doesn't really work with, with everything else that we're trying to do. So we're just basing all our, uh, you know, we're basing all of our uh, work on uh, the Raspbian operating system, um, so yeah. Originally there were quite a few problems with SD card corruption and people losing their work. Um, over the last year, uh, how have how have things improved? Okay, so yeah, we found, um, I mean we had a lot of people finding lots of different issues um, with corruption and um, we never saw it here actually. Uh, it basically um, it it took enough. It took actually communicating with our uh, with, with with the guys out there to to actually get SD cards specific SD cards that that actually seem to corrupt because it is a timing like quite often these errors are timing related. So it requires a specific Pi or a specific SD card or quite often a specific you know SD card and Pi that make this happen more so that I can actually debug it. Um, what I did was to, somebody found um, an SD card that, that had a particular problem and um, they sent it to me and then I actually created an analyzer to, um, out of an FPGA and, uh, and a PC to actually analyze all of the SD card communications so that I can actually work out what was going wrong. Um, and from that we actually found that there was a, a bug in the hardware which we have now worked around. Um, so that's one particular bug which we know was causing, definitely causing corruption and would have caused corruption for a lot of people. It also explains why some people found uh, the corruption significantly worse when they were overclocking uh, the Pi. Um, and uh, yeah, if they try it again, it shouldn't, they shouldn't be seeing that. And we're hoping that people are seeing much lower incidence of corruption now. Um, but we fixed, I think, at least three or four bugs. Um, if people are still seeing corruption, we'd like them to, you know, we'd like them to get in contact with us. Um, if you've got an SD card and it gets corrupted often, that's where that's the situation. If you've got a reproducible bug, that's what I want to see. I want to see that that card or that Pi, um, so that I can actually work out what's going on. Until that, I can't fix it. So, is there going to be a minimal cut down version of Raspbian in the future? So yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've seen a very great deal of like complaints or comments about is that Raspbian, especially recently and especially with uh, noobs as well, um, is actually quite big now. Uh, it's using a minimum of two gig uh, if you install a, a, from an image on its own. With noobs, realistically, you need at least four gig, and realistically, for any kind of space whilst you've got it installed, you you need eight gig cards to um, to install it on. So what we have got thought of doing, and mostly that's because you know of, of a lot of the the great software that we've added, things like Mathematica and the Oracle Java, which um, which are you know great, you know to, they're, they're brilliant things to add to Raspbian. It's just that that makes that standard build quite large. So we are going to create a and support a, a kind of minimal cut down version of Raspbian, so that it should have all the capabilities of, of that you, you you commonly have with Raspbian. It's just gonna you know we'll cut out. A few hundred, few hundred meg. Um, try to get it down to maybe sort of, sort of 1.2, 1.3 gig, so that actually you know you so that you can install it on a two gig card, you know, safely and, and use it on the two gig card again. So one of the key aspects of the Pi is it's a really cheap price point, and uh, quite a few people have been wondering uh, why is it so cheap. Okay, so uh, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi is so cheap because for a number of reasons. Number one is the processor that sits in there. Um, is made to work running mobile phones and therefore it's been made to not cost a huge amount of money because mobile phones don't cost a huge amount of money. Um, so 
and it's also very low power for the, exactly the same reason. The other thing is that we make these in very, very large numbers, and therefore we get to uh, we get to really beat up on the the you know for Broadcom to get them to to help bring the price down. Um, and the same with all the other devices on that Raspberry Pi, you know, all the connectors and the components are on there. Um, we get a lot of help from people like Sony with, with our partners like Farnell and RS who go around and make, you know, because they have because they have the buying power because of the sheer volume of Raspberry Pis that we create, we have the ability to push down that price. And rather than push down that price and uh, you know, basically make more money, what we do is we, we try to, as much as possible, to push down that price and then pass on those savings to you um, in the form of actually spending more money on the Raspberry Pi to make it better. So, you know, our, you know the, Rev, the Rev2 of the Raspberry Pi had, you know, an extra 512, sorry, an extra 256 meg of memory. You know, we improved lots of bit, you know, lots of bits and used better quality um, devices on the, on the Rev2. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's kind of the way we move forward, and that's that's that we can only do that because of you know because you're buying it. And that was all we had time for. Do you have questions that you'd like Gordon to answer? Either send them to me at the Raspberry Pi at gmail.com or bombard Gordon's Twitter account directly with them. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and until next time, bye.